to the world. From Falkirk, where they left the train, the King and Queen and the Princesses drove to Stirling, where they were received by Mr. McMichael, the Provost. The Municipal Party were presented by Mr. Joseph Westwood, Secretary of State for Scotland. After luncheon, the Queen planted a tree in the grounds of the municipal buildings to commemorate the royal visit in this victory year. When the royal party visited Stirling Castle, they were received by Lieutenant General Sir Neil Ritchie, once commander of the famous 8th Army, and now GOC and C Scottish Command. The Guard of Honour was mounted by the Argyll and Sutherland Highlanders, men of a regiment universally recognised as one of the greatest fighting units in the British Army. The inspection of the castle followed. Stirling, of course, was once the key to the Highlands, and the castle, which is of unknown antiquity, was closely linked with the fortunes of Scottish monarchs from the 12th century until the union of the crowns in 1603. Not far off lies the field of Bannockburn, which can be seen from the castle. The royal tour through central Scotland also included visits to Grangemouth and Linlithgow before their majesties proceeded to Edinburgh. In Edinburgh, their Majesty's arrival at the Royal Scottish Academy was the signal for a typical ovation from the Scottish people who had been assembling in elegant Princess Street for hours in advance. The surrender of the keys of the city by the Lord Provost was in full accord with tradition and the Queen's bouquet was presented by Miss Diana Falconer, the Lady Provost. Then, while the salute of 21 guns continued, her father, John Ireland Falconer, was knighted by the King. The first time such a ceremony has been performed in public for centuries. His Majesty proceeded to the inspection of the Guard of Honour, and while one of our cameras followed this ceremony, another concentrated on the Queen in conversation with Sir John's daughter. Cheers broke out afresh as the royal party drove along Princess Street on their way to Holyrood House, where they were to spend the next few days. 